Hi, I am Dr. Guru Prasad Husukar, consultant neurologist at uh, Kolambesha Referral Hospital, Ashwantpur. My special interest is uh, Parkinson disease and movement disorders. Parkinson disease can be effectively treated with medications. There are different class of drugs which are used in Parkinson disease, starting with anticholinergics, which were available a century ago, uh, used for various indications. So the typical anticholinergic drugs uh, like triexafenidyl, Venzotropin hydrochloride can be used in uh, mitigating mostly the tremors in Parkinson's disease. So, but these are drugs which are need to be carefully used. They have their own set of side effects like dryness of mouth, urinary retention. In elderly people, they can cause behavioral changes, cognitive problems, and all. So, we usually use this in, in very specific indications like uh, young onset Parkinson's disease, uh, age of 40 or 50, where the problems with cognition will not be much affected. So we use this in medications uh, in, in patients who have predominantly tremor onset Parkinson's disease and younger people. Another group of uh, drugs which we use in Parkinson's disease is amantadine. Amantadine has a mild anti-Parkinson effect, uh, no doubt. So we can combine with other uh, group of drugs in Parkinson's disease. But specific indication for amantadine in Parkinson's disease when they develop drug-induced uh, dyskinesias. When they develop levodopa-induced dyskinesias later on in the disease, amantadine is used to give relief in terms of dyskinesias. The other group of drugs which are commonly used in Parkinson's disease is dopagonist. We have ergot alkylates and non-ergot alkylates in dopagonist. We have a whole set of medications in this group like ropendrol, primapexol, peribidil, we have cabergolin. So, so much of group of drugs used in this uh, dopagonist. As compared to levodopa, which is a gold standard in Parkinson's disease, this has a less anti parkinson effect, but nevertheless, they are very effective, uh, especially when we use early on in the disease. They give relief to most of the symptoms in Parkinson's disease, be it tremors, be it bradykinesia, be it rigidity. They have effect on most of the features of Parkinson's disease. And uh, the dose also is quite varying. We can use uh, starting from small dose to higher dose. Uh, but when we talk about dopagonists, they have specific side effects, especially speaking about primapexol and uh, ropinrol. They can cause daytime somnolence, they can cause uh, swelling in the feet. Uh, but later on in the disease also can contribute towards uh, drug-induced hallucinations in Parkinson's disease. They can cause psychosis. So we need to be, uh, you know, keep a watch on these side effects when we are using uh, these medications in Parkinson's disease. But uh, till now, almost even after 40 years of the introduction of levodopa, it remains the gold standard for treatment of Parkinson's disease. It almost reverses the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, uh, be it tremors, be it uh, bradykinesia or rigidity. Levodopa acts on all the features of Parkinson's disease and it gives you a significant improvement of quality of life in Parkinson's disease. So, we, we introduced levodopa somewhere during the course of the disease, sometimes early, sometimes late, depending on the age group, sometimes, uh, depending on the severity of the disease at the diagnosis, at the time of diagnosis. Uh, but Levodopa will be required to, uh, at some stage of the disease, to relieve most of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Over the years, over the time of, over the course of the disease in Parkinson's disease, levodopa requirement goes up, dopamine requirement goes up. The, we need to uh, optimize the dosing and uh, dosages of, of levodopa. We combine with carbidopa or uh, sometimes COMT inhibitors to uh, increase the effectiveness of uh, levodopa over the time. No doubt it also can cause side effects, it can lead to motor fluctuations, hallucinations, dyskinetic and all. But there are ways to uh, fine tune the dosing of these medications to give effective uh, response to Parkinson's disease features. Uh, secondary or other uh, atypical Parkinson's also respond to these drugs. It can be less as compared to uh, the other typical Parkinson's disease but nevertheless they do respond uh, at least uh, briefly or around 20-30% response in atypical Parkinson's disease.